more important that we, that, you know, we educate than we just keep it to a secret and not let, it's what you need to do, but. Well, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be really excited to hear that. Well, I, well I've also been timid to sometimes that I show ways to do stuff, and then people go, oh, and they try it at home and they, they ruin something. So That's this, true. this way to do it is really an unconventional way to do it. Gotcha, gotcha. But it okay. works and it's less invasive. But, and anybody at home can do it themselves. But mm. you can screw something up really bad yourself. There we go. Okay. <laughs> hey YouTube, it's Faye. It's cold. And for today's video, I'm going to bring you Supra Saga Part 2. And in this video, I got some parts in the mail and I'm bringing them to the machine shop <laughs> this morning and I spent a long time there. I spent probably four solid hours in the machine shop and between this visit and last visit I have well over four hours of footage that is just man full of knowledge. I was trying to edit it to create one video and be splitting it up into digestible chunks over the next several videos because there's just so much knowledge and I don't want any of it to become lost and you know that kind of reminds me why I think this this video series is so important to make and why it's important to uh, trust your gut and not necessarily follow the masses there have been so many times throughout this build where I've had people in my life or people on the internet or people that I don't really know and even people that I know and love tell me Faye just like Stop, <laughs> get rid of this M&M, swap it to Jay-Z and all of your problems will be forever solved. And that may be true, but think about all the incredible learning opportunities that I would have missed out on by not taking the time to figure out this problem. <laughs> learning is expensive, but I never went to automotive school. So this is kind of like my automotive school and I'm happy to invest in parts that will result in a badass engine. Uh, than uh, the just being called tuition, I guess. I'm making my own school. And then I get to share it with y'all, which is even better. And plus there's something super satisfying about keeping the stock engine and just seeing what is possible with this killer engine that you know was, was produced in 1989. So you know, I'm, I'm excited to see where this is gonna go. So that being said, this video is going to be about the 7M cylinder head and preparing it for straightening. So, without further ado, here goes. I'm gonna take the time to bash my head. That's what you're going for. Should give me a nice, lopey idle. And I love how, you see the little line? That's when they test them for straightness. That right there? Yeah, because yeah, it's a little the down indicator, you know? So, so they had it on V-blocks. You can see there, there, move to there, and they just put it on, you know, just checking it for straightness, which is beautiful. Well, hey, at least someone checked something for straightness. Right. Springs and retainers, yes. Yes. Yes, to match the cam. Yeah, and I wasn't going to buy them at first because I didn't want to take the head off. Oh, but no. I had to take the head off anyway. So yeah. apparently this can be used, like these cams are okay with stock springs. But but yes, know. let's put in a brand new But set. since the that. head's off, I'm just and like, you know what? Look at this. Titanium retainers? Yeah. Wow. I know, I'm so excited. Mm. I'm so Air, excited. Airways more. There they are, man. That's a... That's the shit. I, I'm, I'm so I'm so excited. Oh, you have no golly. idea. I'm so excited. Oh, this is cool. This is real cool. All right. And we like Brian Crower. I mean, it's just, it's the real stuff. It's not generic China Pro stuff. So all you've done so far is clean it. We we cleaned it. It's been completely cleaned. <sighs> that looks amazing. We got all the carbon out from everywhere. And now we can see something. Before, you know, you can't see what's what's going on. I can see it had a little something going on in here. Yeah, what is that? Just some little something at one time gone through that cylinder. So right now, all the basic I'm doing is checking every single thread. I, I want to make sure I, I check every single thread. I'm looking to make sure that you can see here, it goes on way, way, way past the top. Awesome. Uh, we don't want to sit there and crank down or anything. We want to make sure everything goes in. Not everybody's going to do that many holes, but you just want to make sure. This is real, real critical, and all those threads are really important. And you're going through and making sure all these are clean because this has been glass beaded. It's been glass beaded. One piece of glass bead in here will tear up your threads. One piece of glass bead inside of anywhere will tear up your engine. Yeah. So glass beading is good, but I would rather if you don't, just because you want to make it look pretty, 
forget the way it looks. I'd rather have it clean, but don't have, if you have glass beads in here anywhere, your ink is junk. So I glass bead because that I think it's, you know, it's really, really clean, but I make sure everything's perfectly clean. So now that it's been glass beaded, I need to remove all these plugs because there's no way that I can make sure there's no glass beads under here. Oh yeah, I'll get new gaskets okay. of these. That's no problem. Here, here it is right there, you feel it? And look, there's, oh. there's the glass beads, as fine as they are, but they're stuck up on, under here at the bottom. Wow. So okay. when you glass bead something, you really gotta clean it really well. Speaking of cleaning, I had a question about the block. Um, what is the proper way to clean the block surface and prepare it? Because I've got a bunch of that old head gasket material stuck to it and rust Do on it. Do not use scotch bright. Okay. On a, on a zip wheel. Everybody okay. does. Some of the hardest scotch people Scotch-Brite on a zip wheel. Everybody I've does. seen that so much. I had a, one, <gasps> one, of my, one of my customers that I do, BMW and Mercedes heads, he, he'd come in here and he all of a sudden he never had it, but it was all buffed everything. Well, it took an extra four or 5,000 to just to clean the, the thing because he was scotch writing on a little little pad, you know, getting all the gaskets off. And know? then, you know how like you use the red rags and like they just get tore up on everything and they lose little, little, what do you use for, um, for rag? I mean, I see this shop towel here, but mm -hmm. is that what you use for? That, that, that's what we use. And, it, then, and then, does it not have the little fibers? It doesn't have the fibers, just like a, a blue sh shop rag. You see, it's really, you know, but when these are new, when when our shop guy brings his new ones, man, it looks like a, like a cat in here, everywhere else. So it's real simple. Is 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 just before everything is done, I use a you know a lot of brake cleaning air. Yep. Brake clean will 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 release it from everything, yep. and then air blows it off. Right. But then after that, don't go get a rag on it. And just before you're about to put the head on, you're gonna have an MLS gasket. Um, uh, you know, it's a yep. multi-layered gasket, so it, it needs no sealant. It needs to be totally, totally, totally clean. Yes. Totally clean. I tell everybody, rubbing alcohol. Paint thinner, brake clean, brake clean, rubbing alcohol, paint thinner. Wow. Anything that, that does not leave a residue, which brake clean, because it's made for brakes, doesn't leave a residue. So, so uh, I like it more than, more than car cleaner. But anything that once it, it dries, it evaporates, and you leave, you leave nothing. Okay. And then you spray it down, blow dry it, and you're ready to put your heads on. The same thing. On the head bolts, you're going to run these head bolts in, in and out by hand. No one will do that. Because they think, all you're going to use an air ratchet. And then you're no. not going to get the, the, the right torque if there's any friction at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and especially with those, they're specific bolts. They've got a specific fastener sealant on them, or yep. lubricant, rather. A a a a a ARP has got their figured own. out what it takes to stretch that bolt. It's like, a, like a, a rubber band that's holding the head onto the motor. It's actually, it stretches and it actually moves up and down. That's oh, really? They str I thought that's why they were... They were reusable because they didn't stretch. Well, they don't. No, no, they they do stretch. But ARP is is their quality of the metal allows it to stretch or shrink, and it, you want a bolt always oh. to stretch. If a bolt doesn't stretch, it's bad. I if, see. If, if you know you you want a bolt to stretch, but you want it to come back. You want it yep. to be a rubber band, not a soft bolt will stretch and stay longer. That's why when you <laughs> measure bolts, if, yeah. if a bolt's too long, throw yes. it away. Yep, yep, absolutely. Because it's stretched and it stayed stretched. An ARP will stretch, and then when you release it, will come back to, to wow. its normal state. So that's why you, it, you, you literally have all these bolts are literally like rubber bands holding your head on, in place. It's allowing it to move. It's allowing it to stretch. It's allowing it to yeah, flex. Yeah, it's got to move. It's yeah. got to move a little bit. So what the ARP has designed, I'm not an ARP engineer, a bolt engineer, but they have it in the middle of this window. So it's already pre-stretched to have a load on the head, and it can keep stretching and come back and wow. always has the right amount of attention on the head gasket and your little port work was pretty nice pretty cool oh thanks i did that good, on my kitchen good job on the, on the, table. you didn't screw anything up that's good screw, yes and, and it was nice what, what you did enhanced it cool hey thanks yeah that, that was really nice when i looked at it it's like most people they butcher the short turn thinking oh look it's in the way let me grind in here the short turn is the worst thing you can touch i tell everybody stay off the floor Hey, that's another thing. Stay off the floor. But uh, um, you know, the air does, does not like to do a turn. So yeah. if the air is turning, yeah. it's going to go on the roof. Because okay. the air is right. slamming right. it and it's going to do a turn and it's going to hit the top. Yep. Well, everybody yep. wants to cut in here and that's the, the floor. It causes turbulence. As air goes around, it's not even touching here. In fact, on some things, we actually raise the floor to get airspeed faster. So what we want to do is we want to move up here. Don't leave the floor alone. I mean, my finger, but leave the floor alone. <laughs> If you start cutting the floor to make this bigger, air doing the turn just starts, just starts turbulating right here. Just start doing turns, and it's not good. Huh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I was lucky. <laughs> you got lucky. You didn't. You stayed off the floor, which is... It, it's just already a Toyota. They're already way enhanced. What, what, what you did is you, you took a production head, and you just took a little tweaks here and there, because it's production, and you made it all even, so that's real nice. Okay, let's get back to the cams. <laughs> I'll bring the cams so we can see how... 
Oh. There's your, there's your rock. Oh my God. And then you can see what that was happening to your journals. The journals really weren't weren't liking it. As you went further out, you can see how the the, the stress was oh, yeah. really quite this a bit. This is the first cap I took off. And, and you saw I, it and you I thought. saw it and uh, yeah. Actually, in the video, I have just me saying, ooh, that doesn't look good. And then I turned it off. I turned off my camera. I was so depressed. I was like, oh my God, this is the end. But it's going to be okay. I was really amazed at, at uh, like I said, the oil you used really did, did do its number because it stopped fr friction. So I don't know. Ooh. And it was at a bind. It, I'm like, like right now, we haven't done anything. If we, if we put these cams on here, put a drop of oil, put these caps on there, you can't turn the cam. I mean, it's just locked up. I mean, so the only thing that was turning these cams was it was fighting these cam gears. Yeah. That's why you were sharing the bolts up in the front. Yeah. It was just, it was, you know, it was doing it. So that's an amazing thing that it could do it, but it, it actually wasn't, you know, doing it for long. You know, how you took two gears, it ruined two gears. Yep. So, um, but it was, it was working. But now what we're going to do is that'll be the next video. We'll straighten this, um, get it perfectly straight to our cam just spin without any, any friction at all. That would we be get both amazing. cams just spinning perfectly. Then we'll do our machine work. Like I said, the rest of it is all, it's all, you know, your vibe job is actually pretty good. It's going to change a little bit when we do that, but I'm going to just try to do it, actually a very light cut because you actually still have real sharp seats. If you look at your, at the seats, you can even count the angles. One, two, oh, yeah. three, four, five. You have a five angle vibe job. Toad is badass. Um, so um, they're real, real, real nice and sharp still. I call them sharp when you can actually see all the angles still. They're not real hammered out. I mean, okay. really, well, really it was nice. Like, it was like five thousand miles ago. Yeah, that's that's how m many miles I got on this engine shame, since right? two thousand fifteen <laughs> when I did the rebuild. And if you wouldn't have had good oil, it wouldn't last that long. Yeah, well, that's true. I did find the uh, the bottles, by the way. It is synthetic. Yes, so what you synthetic. said. So yeah. that's that's that's. The I'm VR1, they VR1 make person. they make one. <laughs> I didn't know they made a VR1 racing synthetic. Yeah. But, you know, we won't get into one. one. Yeah. We won't get into one. We won't get into one. When I see stuff that comes in there that's really good, and I can see they're all doing the job, I ask it, you know, people. And they tell me, what should I use? I said, use what you were using. Yeah. And I don't care if you use Qu Quaker State and it doesn't work for anybody else. It's working for you. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, it doesn't. So, I, one thing is, you know, if it's good, it's good. The end of part two. Don't worry, part three is coming. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and hope you learned something. <laughs> I certainly did. And if you liked this video, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you liked the parts that I used in this video, which I know you did, you can find the links to those in the description below. I just got them from Drift Motion. I freaking love those guys. No one's paying me to say this. They're literally the best. They've helped me so much over the years in terms of answering questions and helping me pick the right parts. and. Aaron really knows his stuff, so thank you so much if you're watching this, which I know you aren't because you're really busy, but if you are watching this, Aaron, thank you for spending so much time on the phone with me to make sure that I got the right stuff and that I was satisfied and that everything's working out great. So I will see y'all in my next video next week. Okay. Yeah, there's one guy on the internet who actually, since he answered correctly, I guess you need to tag him and I'm going to show you, which I wouldn't have shown you, <gasps> step number two on how to straighten. Wait, what? Second way to do it that I didn't want to show. But if so someone answered correctly and it's like, you know what, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's what Smoke Unix said, we, we were at, at, at this. SEMA at a thing and, and it's all the best engine builders of the world and they're there we got the front row and we're there waiting and everybody's asking st stupid questions and everybody's answering but he's getting kind of frustrated and I just said well I'm gonna and I asked all questions but I had to you know Smokey what's up and he went through, and well he made everybody on stage answer and they wouldn't I think it was Pinzol IndyCar was there and all they go tell them the truth you're not running them Pinzol in that car <gasps> and they're like uh, go tell him the damn truth. We're not going to screw up a guy. A young guy, th th he, now he's got the right answer. We're going to go tell him the lies. And he knows what's, what's right. And we're going to go screw him all up? No, I want to get that video because somebody was videoing it there at Forsema. So it has to be in the archives. Yeah. I, I want to get it. So he just, he was getting angry. He just came up to live. And he made everybody answer. And they were all real timid because they didn't want to answer because of sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. I and he's been there trouble. at SEMA for prolong. And then he tells the truth. He goes, I'm not going to lie to you. I sold out. I sold out. I'm 80 something. I sold out. But because I sold out doesn't mean you have to sell out and you're right. 
And he made everybody go, that's he's right, that's right, exactly right. That's the guy. So yeah. in the spirit. Smokey Eunuch. And I said, what do you got, bro? <laughs> well, in the spirit of Smokey Eunuch. <laughs> Hi guys, what you digging for? Is there good stuff in there? Is there a whole bunch of good stuff in there? <laughs> Where's your face? Hi. Oh, it's messy. Oh, it's really messy. Oh, what you digging for? Mm. Any good stuff in there? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>